Welcome to Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown. Municipal Affairs is about delving into the pressing issues that shape our municipalities from coast to coast to coast here in Canada. And today, we have the privilege of sitting down with a leader at the forefront of Ontario's urban landscape, a mayor whose vision and dedication are shaping the very foundations of our cities in the province of Ontario. Burlington Mayor and Chair of the Ontario Big City Mayor's Caucus, Mayor Marianne Mead Ward. Now, those who don't know, the Ontario Big City Mayor's Caucus is an alliance of dynamic leaders united in their mission to advocate for policies that build vibrant, resilient cities. These mayors are the voices of our urban centers in the province of Ontario, standing up for progress, innovation, and collaboration in the face of challenges that shape their communities. And in today's episode, we are delving deep into the issues that are shaping the landscape of those big cities in Ontario, particularly the housing crisis, the critical need for cooperation among the provincial government, the federal government, and all municipal governments, and the challenges that big cities are grappling with today as well. Our conversation with Mayor Mead Ward is a candid exploration of the housing crisis, a pressing issue that demands a united front. We'll uncover the need for all levels of government to come together and forge a path towards a sustainable solution. But that's not all. Mayor Mead Ward and I also delve deep into the broader challenges that big city mayors in Ontario are confronted with today. We'll explore the need for a new fiscal framework, one that addresses the unique needs of 2023 and beyond. And if you've been following the headlines recently, you've likely heard about the significant changes that some municipalities have undergone over the last few months. We don't shy away from discussing the impact of the new strong mayor powers that the provincial government has instilled, weighing the pros and cons of the shift in governance. So, my friends, get ready for an engaging and enlightening discussion that pulls back the curtain on the challenges, decisions, and aspirations that drive the big cities in the province of Ontario forward. Now, this is the Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown, and here is our one-on-one -on -one interview with Mayor Marianne Mead Ward. In your opinion, as chair of the Ontario Big City Mayor's Caucus, what's the status and the state of big cities in the province of Ontario today? Well, we are all under pressure for from population growth. And that is right across Ontario, but it's certainly very true of any municipality in the GTHA and uh, any any municipality that is one of our members, because we're uh, 100,000 population plus. So we have everybody from 100,000 up to 3 million. <laughs> That's the biggest city. Uh, and we're all having to um, plan for new immigration uh, new international students, refugees, newcomers, and uh, and it's it's a challenge because we are already behind on housing uh, starts in the province and really in the country. So it is an all hands on deck housing crisis, planning for that growth, but but more than that, not just housing units, making sure that we get complete communities. So that includes parks, it includes community centers and community amenities, it includes uh, shops and services and jobs. Now, there's been a big focus on immigration over the last few probably weeks, if not months, even the last year. Mm -hmm. And in correlation with that, it comes with housing. And you talked about that briefly here for a second. Um, but are municipalities and especially the big cities getting what they need from the provincial and federal governments to address these issues in a timely fashion and in a financial economic fashion? Because we, I, I speak to mayors and uh, city leaders from across this country, and it doesn't seem like this is an issue that's just for big cities. It's happening across the country. So are you hearing from your provincial and federal counterparts that they're willing to talk with you and help you sort through this issue? Absolutely. And I think partnership is the word of the day and every level of government coming together. So federal, provincial, for some of us, regional. So Burlington, of course, is part of a regional government. There's four municipalities. Uh, some of our members are single tier uh, housing, especially social housing sits at the regional level for us. 
Uh, and then, of course, the municipalities. So recently, the Ontario Big City Mayors did join together to communicate with the federal government to say, look, if you when you are planning your immigration numbers, you need to give us a seat at the table because when you bring people in, they need a place to live and, and we do the planning for that. And the targets that the government has recently announced, uh, which are, you know, we welcome immigration. We know we need the jobs. We wanna be a safe haven for, for people fleeing, uh, you know, disaster, natural or, or human caused in other parts of the world. But we need to be, at the table to to say, okay, uh, if that's what you're going to let in, this is how we're going to have to plan. The housing accelerator fund from the federal government is very helpful. Uh, we are applying. I, I'm sure that most of our members are applying for that funding. So that will that will really help us to put our plans into place and implement them. So we've asked for a meeting with the federal government to uh, to have that seat at the table and also have the provincial government there because they set policies. They also have funding available for different types of housing. And, and that's a key thrust because what we don't wanna see is what we recently saw in Toronto and other municipalities where when newcomers come and they're sleeping on the streets. That is not the Canadian welcome and the Canadian dream that we want to offer people. So we need to do better. And we flag that as a caucus. Municipalities are the they often are often called the children of the provincial government. So when you're approaching the federal government, I know you you you, 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 you smile there for a little bit, but you've probably heard that from time and time again. Is it easier for the Ontario big city mayors to go to the province or to the federal government right now? And I'm not trying to pit, pull, play the political card mm -hmm. right now. It's just when I was back in Ontario speaking to mayors and councillors from big cities uh, that you represent, uh, I was hearing that it's easier sometimes to go to the federal government or even just go it alone because neither one of them wants the municipalities at the table because they don't see them as an equal level of government. Well, we have seen a, a huge shift even in the past few months and some of the situations that I just described where we have newcomers living on the street. This is a conversation across the country and I think uh, the fact that we all now, all the levels of government agree that there is a housing crisis, it is nationwide and that we all need to come together. So the spirit now is one of collaboration. It is an emergency. We have a housing emergency in this country. And so we need to treat it as such. And so we have no problem getting the ear of the federal government and federal ministers in housing. Uh, we have our annual Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference next week, starting Saturday. In uh, London. Some of us uh, in, in London. And, uh, you know, we, we will have a representative from federal, uh, the federal government, the housing uh, portfolio, joining our Ontario Big City Mayor's caucus meeting. Uh, so we, we do our caucus meeting at the same time as AMO. We also have the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing joining our caucus meeting. We have very open dialogue and relationships with uh, ministers at both the federal and provincial level. And we are asking again for a sit down of all levels of government to make sure that, we, that each is doing our part. And, and the key here is that no one level of government is going to solve this. No one level of government is to blame, even though, you know, in recent months, municipalities have, have taken the brunt of the blame. And, you know, we know we can do better and we're committed to that. However, we have this much control over housing and there's lots of other players that if those pieces aren't in place, the whole thing's going to fall apart. So, we, we need to make sure that everybody knows their role, everyone's doing their role, and that we come together to talk to each other. And, and that really hasn't been there before, not because, you know, I'm an optimist, not because people didn't want to talk to each other. It's just that we didn't need to. The system wasn't in crisis. It now is. You talk about all three levels of government needing to sit down at the table, but you and I will probably may agree on this, but there's also another component to the housing crisis, and that's the developers, and that's the actual builders. Mm -hmm. And there is a, there's a shortage of people who are building right now because of the economic times. Now, the Ford government has asked the uh, cities in Ontario to build a lot more house, uh, houses with Bill 23. Um and that was introduced, I think, in 2022. You probably know this a little bit better than me, but mm -hmm. I think it was introduced in early 2022. Uh, but 
are the cities able to keep up with the demands that the provincial government has put on them with Bill 23? And the reason I ask that is because across Canada, people aren't building as quickly as the provincial, Mm -hmm. federal, and even municipal leaders need them to, to address this housing crisis. So there's two really important things to to say here. First of all, all 29 of the Ontario big city mayors were given a housing pledge by the province. So they basically took, you know, we think we need 1.5 million homes in the next 10 years. That has been independently verified by others, you know, to calculate what's coming and what the need is now and all of that. Uh, Divided it up among the 29 of us. So Burlington got 29,000, every single mayor, and their council supported that pledge. We are we are all on deck to do our part. So that's really important. We recognize there's a crisis. Municipalities have accepted and in some cases enthusiastically the pledge and we're, we're well on our way. The other piece though, is that municipalities do not build. We don't build. We set the planning permissions, the policies, and we issue permits. And so in Burlington, for example, we have 7,600 roughly units that are tied up at the Ontario Land Tribunal. We don't control that process. We don't control that decision-making or the timing. And it's something I've uh, raised with uh, the province that, you know, any help you can give us to to clear that out, uh, you'll, you'll release some units here in Burlington. The other piece is we also have 3,600 units in Burlington where we're waiting for developers to come in and apply for site plan. And until they do that, they don't get a permit, but we're we're waiting for them. And we can't force or compel people to come in once they've got their planning approvals uh, for zoning and official plan and all of that to come in and get site plan. So so that right there is over 10,000 units. That's half of, almost half of our pledge. And so we do need builders to come in and complete the application process. And once the approvals are there, to come and get their final building permit and get shovel in the ground. And we know that there are delays there. And and so, uh, you know, one of the reasons for developers, high interest rates, people are not getting qualified for mortgages, labor shortages, uh, supply chain issues. These are all very real issues for the development side of the ledger, nothing to do with the municipality in terms of what we control. And so that's where we need the federal and provincial government to help with some of those things. You're, the Ontario big city mayors are also asking, along with FCM, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, for a new fiscal framework for municipalities, because a lot of municipalities, and I'm assuming uh, from the conversations I've had, and you probably are having as well, uh, municipalities are being asked to do more with less money or with the same mm-hmm. amount of money. Um, what does the new fiscal framework mean to big city mayors or even to the city of Burlington? And what are you specifically looking for to sort of see a new new framework in place to allow municipalities to get more money, but also uh, figure out how to address some of the social issues that are being downloaded onto municipalities in 2023? So the first would be a reallocation of some of the tax, the existing dollars that are collected. So municipalities, uh, so, so the saying is that the federal government has Uh, has all the money, the provincial government has all the power, and the municipalities have all the problems. (laughs) (laughs) And and we only get nine cents on the dollar of of taxes. The other, you know, 90 cents, 91 cents goes to federal and provincial coffers. So we need to, uh, to, to do some reallocation there. And the other piece of it is that municipalities do get grant funding from federal and provincial governments, but it is on uh, an intake basis, it's on an allocation basis. Uh, you line up, you you pitch your uh, program or your project, and then you wait to see if it's been approved. And those are always oversubscribed. There's always far more demand than money available. And so you never know, how can we plan the city of the future and the city of today, not knowing if we're gonna get funding to do what we need to do a year or two or three years out. It, it is not, a sustainable way to run a country or to run cities. And so uh, a a different way of 
unlocking, again, some of those existing funding that is already going to municipalities. So we've talked about predict predictable infrastructure funding, uh, the gas tax, making that permanent and predictable was a start, but that's just one funding pot. So we've asked uh, at the Ontario Big City Mayors and FCM uh, staff are, are now looking at what exactly would that look like in practical technical terms around a new fiscal framework. But, but we know we cannot continue to run cities based on a funding model that was established over 100 years ago. It's just not sustainable. Are no, and understandable, but I want to know, are you seeing the challenges of today different from 10 years ago in municipal governments? Because the reason I say that in 10 years time from now, we're going to be dealing with a lot more different issues compared to what we're dealing with today, unless we address them today. So in your time in municipal government and in your time speaking with uh, your big city mayor colleagues, are you seeing the the role of the municipal government change dramatically and do you see it heading to a sort of danger zone if we don't address it today? Well, we know we have a mental health and homelessness crisis, which of course is related very directly to the housing crisis and, and the government assisted uh, you know, side of the scale of housing. So it's, there's everything, when we talk about housing, there's government assisted all the way to uh, market-based housing and everything in between. And we can't lose sight of the supportive housing. And, and so one of the key focus areas for the Ontario Big City Mayors has been uh, housing and homelessness and mental health. And to ask the, the province and the federal government to help us because those are the issues that land literally on our doorstep. It is landing in a lot of our downtowns and it is affecting business, economy, tourism. Uh, of course, the, the first people that it, it affects are the people living on the streets. This is not Canada. We can do better. People should not have to be living homeless on the streets in, our, in any of our cities. So, so why is that happening? Why is there not housing uh, available? And, and we've seen a huge sea change in mental health issues presenting in the municipalities. Again, we see it it, it lands on our front doorstep that the symptoms and the outcomes of people not being able to get the supports they need, uh, it, it, it lands with us. And then our constituents, our, our residents say, you need to fix this. Uh, this isn't compassionate. It's not fair to the people and it's, it's, affecting, uh, it's affecting our community in a, in a negative way. And so, uh, so that's probably the biggest uh, major change. There's always been those issues in cities, but the magnitude, the scale, and the urgency to deal with them is uh, is well passed, and we need to we really need to focus on that as a as an emergency as well. So until the federal government and provincial government and municipalities all come to the same table to start addressing this, municipalities are sort of left in the lurch and trying to figure out this uh, by themselves. They're trying to do it on their own and trying to make sure it doesn't come at a massive cost because you have other things that you have to worry about, infrastructure being one of them. You have to worry mm -hmm. about your park system. You have to worry about your pools. So how do municipalities sort of navigate the next few months, few years, until that big meeting actually does take place. Because as much as you and I will probably agree to disagree on this, federal and provincial governments come and go. Federal and provincial governments don't traditionally change overnight when it comes to funding or allocating of programs. I worked at Queen's Park, so I know it can take six to eight months to even change the things that the way the things work. But until then, municipalities, you're the government of proximity, as Scott Pierce said in Toronto, mm -hmm. you make changes, they take place the next day. So what do municipalities mm -hmm. have to do now and big cities have to do now to address these issues while understanding that you have to focus on day to day municipal issues as well, as well as the downloading services that are being put upon the big cities? Well, we're, first of all, we're going to keep using our voice to raise the alarm bells and to make sure that everyone is aware this is an issue. And we will keep asking for that meeting. And, and you know, it's not the first time. We have had some success uh, in, in getting provincial and federal people to the table. There was a recent housing summit uh, that the, the province called with the big city mayors. Uh, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario held one. We do, as I said, get ministers coming to our uh, caucus meetings to talk to us. So, so the dialogue has started, uh, but municipalities are stepping into the space and it's a little easier for single tier like Toronto, but they're starting, they're building 
housing themselves. They're, they're leading the way. They're working with people, uh, developers for sure, but also nonprofit housing agencies. Habitat for Humanity is, is just one. And, and you know we're doing that in uh, Burlington where we will say, great, you can have this development if you want, but we want to grab X percent of the units to partner with uh, a developer or to partner with Habitat to make sure that they're uh, offered to people of low income. Uh, in, in one case, a building in my, when I was the ward counselor, uh, there were 10 units that the region bought to take people off the housing wait list. And so we will continue to ramp up our efforts, but, but by doing that, by, by, by doing the right thing, stepping into the space to solve the problem quickly, we're taking on more and more financial responsibility and in, in effect subsidizing the federal and provincial governments. So again, not sustainable, uh, not sustainable on the back of the property tax uh, payer for sure, uh, but but we can't you know just turn a blind eye and say well it's not us. So you know go go talk to those other levels of government and and the community rightly should not stand for that. So uh, so we'll do what we can to lead the way, but we really need really need their help. I want to turn to my last subject, and it's a quick one, and then it's about uh, the strong mayor powers. Over the summer, they were rolled out to 26 more municipalities, I believe, including Burlington, including yourself. Mm -hmm. And I want to know from you as the mayor, but also as the chair of the Ontario Big City Mayors, what does this mean for big cities? What does this mean for the 26 plus the other two, Ottawa and Toronto, so 28, if I'm not mistaken, altogether, uh, mayors uh, going forward? Because it seems like it's a contentious issue. I've been watching it from afar and I've been hearing mm -hmm. some of the rumblings from councillors about this might not be a good thing. But in your standpoint as mayor, but also as chair, what did you think about the announcement over the summer? So there are. It, it's really important to note that there are many different powers within the strong mayor powers. I think the one that is personally most problematic, obviously, is the... the is the uh, you know you can you can get things through with one third of the vote. It, it's not a power, but very undemocratic. Not a power I would ever use. Uh, but you know, in our caucus, there are mayors saying, look, some of the other things may be useful. The ability to strike a committee, as a for example, to speed along certain uh, certain decisions. So. You know, it, it really is up to each individual mayor and their council how they wish to use the powers or not use the powers. Just because they're there doesn't mean they will be used. And, you know, for my part, I continue to be a very collaborative uh, leader. I will continue to do that. Um, but striking a committee, is that going to shatter democracy? No. So it's really important <laughs> to understand when we talk about small mayor power or strong mayor powers, what most people are most concerned about, I am too. And our, you know, I would say our caucuses too, that, that one third majority vote. Um, and, and at the end of the day, the only question that needs to be asked about those powers is will it help my community to use them or not? That's the question that each mayor should be asking themselves. I understand. Well, so I want to end on a sort of positive note compared to that last question. But I want to ask you, I started with the state of Ontario big cities in the province of Ontario today. Mm -hmm. So I want to know about the future. What does the future hold for Ontario big cities, in your opinion, as chair? Well, you're talking to an optimist. <laughs> and I believe that we have smart people. We have uh, we're a wealthy country and we have political will to solve some of these. And if you if you put all of that together, we should be able to solve the housing crisis, the homelessness and mental health crisis. And it will mean all of us thinking in different ways. The old solutions aren't going to work. The old financing models are not going to work. It will require uh, collaboration. That means putting aside uh, partisanship. We were able to do it during COVID, which is our most recent major emergency. So we need to treat housing in the same way. It is, it is a crisis, it is an emergency, and so we need to make sure that we are uh, leaving partisanship at the door and making sure that we work together. And, and that's one of the great things about our caucus as well. There's 29 mayors and uh, probably as many political opinions and, and political stripes, and yet we all agree that we have to come together to collaborate on, on the key issues of our time. And our communities are expecting us to, because it's there's only one voter and we serve, every level of government serves that, 
that voter. Marianne, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for your questions. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us on today's episode of Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in and for being part of this conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest content. From this show, the Municipal Affairs, to the cross-border interviews, and even the political trenches, local government at work, we have you covered for all things municipal. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce high-quality content. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our support page on the Cross Border Interviews website is in the show notes. So once again, thank you again for tuning in. And remember, until next time, just keep talking. 